Right, grade nines, I trust that you coped with the exercise given. Now I'm going to move on to more advanced examples for factorization. Okay, again, this is just a vision, but I thought these examples might be interesting for you and I have another exercise for you to do. So I'm trying to bring in application as well as the simple examples. So let's look at these. I'm going to work through three examples with you, after which you will have an exercise to do. Now, example one. 2x to the power of 4 minus 32. Now remember, the question reads, factorize. Before doing anything, the golden rule is always identify if there is a common factor. Remember, common means it has to appear in both terms or all of the terms used in the expression. Even though you have two terms here, let's look. You've got 2x for 32. It's clear that 2 is a multiple of 32 or 2 is a factor of 32. And you, 32 is a multiple of 2 and 2 is a factor of 32. So you could easily take out a common factor of 2. Always look for a common factor first. Common factor first. That's step 1. If I take 2 out as a common factor, that leaves me with x to the power of 4 minus 16. Do I stop here? No. You can clearly see that inside the bracket, there's difference of two squares. 16 is a perfect square, and the even power tells you that it's a perfect square. So you've got to factorize further. Remember, I will upload these notes for you, so you don't have to take down notes. Just listen. 2 is a common factor, so you have to carry the 2 down. That is broken down into dots. So you have difference of two squares, plus and minus. The square root of x, 4, is x squared. The square root of 16 is 4. Wow, now let's look at what's going on. Do I stop there? No, because if you look carefully, this x squared minus 4 is still power. Whoops, sorry, this much. That can be broken down further because there's difference. 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. But this is carried down. It is still part of your answer. So don't forget to carry it down. Lots of you forget to carry that down. If you break that up, you will have two more brackets. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. There we go. In order to get full marks for this question, you've got to reach the final step. If you just stop there, one mark. Okay, so please try and look to see if it is completely factorized before stopping. Example 2. Golden rule, look for the common factor. Is there anything common? You've got 3q squared, 15q plus 12. The variable is not common because there is no variable in the last term. However, 3, 15, and 12, <coughs> excuse me, 3 is common. And that leaves you with q squared, 15 divided by 3 is 5q, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Do I stop here? Let's identify what, what's inside the bracket. You can clearly see it's a trinomial. You carry the 3 down, all plus signs implies all positive factors. So you need the factors of 4 that will give you 5. And it's obvious that it has to be 4 and 1. Positive 4 times positive 1 will give me the last term which I need. Positive 4 plus positive 1 would give me the middle term. So my factors are 4 and 1. It doesn't matter whether the 4 is there or there, because both are positive factors. Okay, so that's example 2. You can see these are a little bit more complex than the first set of examples that I did. Okay, moving on to example 3. Here's an interesting question. You have two terms. That's the first thing you need to identify, is the number of terms in an expression. Now, at the moment, remember the golden rule to factorize is always look for a common factor. 
at the moment there isn't a common factor. So you've got to look and see what can I do to this expression. a squared minus b squared in that bracket you can see dots visible there difference of two squares so if i factorize that i will get a plus b a minus b that is still one term i haven't changed it that one term is just rewritten as a plus b times a minus b there's the plus there now this power 2 i'm just going to expand it write it in expanded notation there's nothing i can do to the a plus b squared please don't go and foil that out because the question is factorizing all you do is leave it in factorized form just rewrite it as two brackets because that's what that power two means the same thing is written in two brackets so if you look at my second step i haven't changed the value of the question i just expanded it so there's my term one and there's my term two now you can look for a common factor because you've got them broken down into factors and it's clearly clear to us here that a plus b is common a plus b is common if this is my common bracket a common factor what am i left with and remember i told you if you are confused take your first term do the working out on the right hand side a plus b or on a piece of paper it doesn't matter that's my first term you divide your first term by the common factor that leaves you with a minus b there's your plus your second term is a plus b times a plus b that leaves you with a plus b so we have one term but what you need to remember is in, an algebra, in algebra, you've always got to add your like terms where necessary without us stating it. So you carry down your common factor and let's look here. You've got A and A. A plus A is 2A. Minus B plus B is 0. Cancels out. So at this point, it's not simplified completely. This is simplification. So this was a tricky question. It was quite difficult but not impossible to do. If you just follow the steps, look at each term, identify the common factor, break it down, write it in expanded form, and then you will be able to see what happens next. Right, grade nines. Those were more advanced examples. Now for the rest of this hour, there's a worksheet put for you up there. It says advanced questions. The questions are a bit difficult, but I want you to look through it, go through the revision notes, go through your notes that you did in class last term and answer the questions. And if you look at question 5 and 6, 5 and 6 are application questions for factorization, which I need to expose you to because that's what the IEB aims for, application. You need to apply your knowledge to these types of questions. It's not difficult, just look at the question and attempt it. If you don't know how to answer it, it's fine, but I'd like to see some attempt made before I give you the answer. So in tomorrow's lesson, before I start tomorrow's work, I will go over these two questions and I would upload the corrections for you on Google Classroom tomorrow. So good luck for the rest of the time available. Do your work. What you don't finish, remember, is homework. Please don't move on to the next hour doing that because you have other subjects to worry about. So your school day, follow the timetable and then whatever's not finished would be classwork. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow, grade nines. Bye-bye.